same agenda. He says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfies your, your mouth with good things, so that your so that your youth is renewed like you. Father God, we thank you now. Lord, we honor you. We praise you. We magnify you. We lift you, Lord. For you are worthy of all the honor. You are worthy of all the praise. Yes, Lord, we come to bless you. We've come to bless you from the bottom of our throat. We've come to lift you up. We've come, Father God, to magnify your name. Lord, we know that you satisfy our souls with loving kindness. You bless us again. And we will not forget your many benefits. We won't forget, Lord, how you have forgiven our iniquity. We won't forget, Lord, how you have healed our diseases. Lord, we won't forget how you redeemed us from destruction. Lord, we know you crowned our heads with love and kindness. Lord, you crowned our heads with tender mercy. And Lord, you've even satisfied our minds with good things. And Lord, you've renewed us like the youth of the eagle. Lord, you've been in a camp around the bottom. You blessed us, Lord. And for that, we come this morning just to say thank you. You blessed us to have another freedom day. And Lord, we know that you have blessed us to be free from the enemy. We thank you, Lord, for saving our soul. We thank you, Lord, for making us whole. We bless your name now. We welcome you in the building. We thank you for being all places. But Lord, we welcome you in the building. We thank you, Lord, for satisfying us with tender mercy. We thank you, Lord, for being here, for wrapping your arms around us. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless this service. Bless us, Father God, that old habits will be thrown away. Old burdens will be rolled away. We pray that your Holy Spirit minister to us, that we will see you as we ought to. And Lord, we thank you for just keeping the glory. All the honor and all the praise, allowing us to be beneficiaries of your many blessings. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful, and anointed name of Jesus Christ we pray. And we ask it all. Amen. Amen. And thank God. Can you lift your hands? Can you glorify him?
morning to see another day. Amen. Thank you, thank you. This next song we're about to do is, is reality to me because God is still blessing me. He blessed me to have the things I have. He blessed me to help me. Can y'all agree with that? Amen. Amen. By the way, I just want to say happy Independence Day. Happy Fourth of July. God bless you guys. Bless you, thanks. And we'll see you another day. This next song we're about to do is God got a blessing. Yes, let, me, let me take this personal. God got a blessing with my name on it. Right. How many of y'all know that God got a blessing with your name on it? We're going to submit this song to you guys. Y'all help us out a little bit. Y'all know the background song. Just help us out a little bit. And we're about to do it just like this. Thank you, Lord.
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God has a blessing with our names on it. And let me tell you something. The most important blessing that God has already given us is when he gave his son Jesus Christ to die on the cross for our sins. That is more important than being healed from cancer. That is more important than having leprosy. But the
how he has placed your feet on solid ground because all of us in this room, maybe not at the church down the street, but all of us in this room have had our feet on shifting sand. But God let just let pick us up and put us on solid ground. Hallelujah. That's why we ought to say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For all the glory, all the honor, we give it to you, Lord. It ought to make you shout. It ought to make you celebrate him. It ought to make you give him the glory. It ought to make you thank him. In all the praise. It makes, it makes me want to shout hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Let me call your attention to Hebrews chapter 13 in the New Testament. The book is Hebrews chapter 13. We will be looking at verses 17 and 18. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 17 and 18. Hit me, Isaiah. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 17. And 18. I want to continue our series. I know this is Freedom Day and we want to be free. Uh, I want to continue my series, Protection of the Unity, to protect the unity. Protect the unity. We are covering our core values here at the New Beginning Church. We only have five of them, our five core values. And regardless of what we do, what part of ministry we participate in, or how we do outreach or activities, we ought to be controlled and we ought to be steered and guided by these five core values, five core values. We all core value number one, core value number one. Last week I gave you one of two and today I will give you two of two. That means today is part two. Hebrews chapter 13, verse number 17 and verse number 18. When you found it, you will discover these words. Obey those who rule over you and be submissive, for they watch out for your souls as those who must give account. Let them do so with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. Pray for us, for we are confident that we have a good conscience in all things desiring to live honorably. I want to talk again about protect the unity. Part two, protect the unity. The unity. Last week I, I said to you that uh, we must protect the unity and these passages come straight uh, to the church and written for the church. Last week I talked to you from Romans chapter 15 verses 5 through 7 and 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 22 what we talked about if we're going to protect the unity we must do so with love. We, we must show love toward each other. So we must have love. We must demonstrate love. And then in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 29 through 32, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 39, 29 rather through 32, it, it, it compels us to refuse gossip. Right. It tells us to refuse to backbite and talk about others. It compels us to make sure that we protect the unity by looking out for each other. So today I want to talk about protecting the unity as you follow leadership. As you follow leadership. This is part two, protect the unity. I remember as a boy, as a teenager, I had just learned to drive and the CB craze was out. If you're more than 40 years old, you remember the CB craze. The CB craze was a time when every teenager and every trucker, every boy teenager and every trucker had a CB in their car. Yes, sir. My name was the Calco Kid. <laughs> I was the Calco Kid, and they knew me throughout Arkansas, Louisiana, 
Mississippi. I was named the Calco Kid. As I drove my little 71 Mercury uh, Maverick, I drove it down through the Mississippi Delta and I was the Calco Kid. I had men surrounding me that taught me how to talk on the sea bait, and they not only taught me how to talk on it, they oftentimes told me what north and south was, what east and west was, and how to get on the radio and talk to truckers by just saying, break the break the one night. <laughs> this is the cow cold kid. I just put I Sola Mississippi in my back pocket. Where is the Smokey on Highway 49? I'm headed south. This is the Cal Coke Kid. <laughs> then you will hear a trucker or some other CB operator come in with their handle and they will tell me, Smokey, right down the road, young folk, if you don't know who Smokey is, it's the highway patrol right on the side of the road. And oftentimes, when they told me that there was a smoky on the side of the road, they would give me a mile marker so I could slow down, or they would give me one of the little small cities, and they would say, right as you enter into Inverness, Mississippi, there's a smoker on the eastbound side on the, on the passenger side of your vehicle. So be careful, there's a bear sitting on the side of the road. Now we knew, we knew in Mississippi there was no bears there, but we, we were concerned with a police officer with a wand that would stick out in the bushes and he would always hide out in the bushes with his wand pointed at us to measure our speed. So by now, I had been three to four years into this CB craze, and Calco Kid was known all over the Mississippi Delta and all over those three states. And the reason why I could broadcast Brother Nanlaw and in several states because I had a long whip that stuck out on the back of my truck and on the back of my vehicle. This whip was about 10 feet tall, and then if you go in the car, I had an amplifier in there, and that amplifier would shut radios down. I would pull in my daddy's driveway, and I would just key it down, and he would come running out the house because I had just shut the radio off. I had just fled over the television set, and he would say, boy, turn that thing down, simply because when I juiced it up really well, it would come through the radio and you could hear me talking in them outside. <laughs> and because I was three to four years into it, right after church, I would sit in my car and I would talk doing the CBK trains back and forth. And I would key down and I would say, this is Cal Coke. I am sitting in the parking lot of Markham Missionary Baptist Church on Highway 3. I'm getting ready to get on Highway 49, and I'm going to head north on 49 to get out of here. But the pastor was standing in the yard, and the pastor was standing there with several deacons. And the pastor stopped talking to the deacons and came over to the car, and he said to me, boy, if you're going to get on that CB, and you're going to make a difference, you need to first understand your direction. He went on to say, he says, 49 does not run from north to south. 49 runs from east to west. Now, I knew he was wrong, but I had to keep quiet. All right. I began to try to, to tell him in a very polite way, you know, 49, and I couldn't say it out loud, Brother Dixon. I said, you know, 49 have been running uh, north and south for the last 25 years. Matter of fact, Pastor, you ain't even from these areas, but I could not say that. I love that, right? But even though I didn't say it, just because of the pastor, taking time to correct me, it was on. My granddaddy was the chairman of the deed, and he overheard the pastor talking to me, Sister Carl. And when he overheard the pastor correcting me, and he could tell that I wanted to say something, boy, did I get a tongue lashing for just looking like I wanted to talk back to the pastor. 
I got a Tom lesson from my granddaddy. Now my granddaddy has taken the side of a man that didn't know what he was talking about. Pastor Jefferson had, had, had told me that I was looking at it the wrong way. I need to do a correction on what I was doing. And I knew myself, Sister Henry, I was right. <laughs> I've been calling this street, this road out for four years on the CB. I've been talking to professional drivers on the CB. And they agreed with me, but I couldn't tell the pastor because he had watched over my soul. My dad, my, my granddaddy would say to me, he said, boy, don't you dare correct the pastor. Don't you dare talk back to the pastor. Don't you dare do anything that will upset the pastor. He reminded me because he watches over your soul. Those were the good old days. That's right. Those were the days when pastors had respect in the neighborhood. Those were the days when, when children wouldn't dare dispute the pastor. Those were the days when, when men understood, even if the pastor is wrong, let God straighten them out. There were pastors that preached back home and, and they didn't put him out. They loved him out. They loved him. They loved him in such a way until he felt so bad about what he was doing, he straightened up. In the text, the Hebrew writer, he tells us in chapter 13, he begins by telling us to make sure you live your life in brotherly love. He says, whatever you do, you ought to walk in love. You ought to walk in a social realm of love where everybody understands that you love and it wasn't our place, and it's not our place to decide if folk love us. It is our place to love people anyhow. It is our place to, to love them even if they're mean to us. It is our place to love them because we ought to love each other, and in loving each other, everybody's not going to have it like you want it. He moves on and he says, even in, in your marriage, show love. Yes, he reminds us that marriage is honorable. Yeah. And it does not matter if you're right or wrong, just honor marriage. Yeah. Men who've been married more than two weeks can let you know that they've apologized many times when they wasn't wrong. Men who've been married more than two weeks will let you know that it, ain't, it doesn't matter if you're right or wrong. It's good to always have the last word, and the last words ought to be yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. It's because you can't be the sister talking anyway. It, it doesn't matter how calm she is in public. It doesn't matter how, how low-key she is in public. You can't be the sister in her conversation. So you might as well just say, yes, ma'am, and, and leave it alone. One guy said the other day, I got the last word in my house. And he said, my last words are, yes, ma'am. Nah. It doesn't make you any lower than a man. It doesn't make you, uh, uh, it doesn't strip you of your manhood. But the writer of Hebrew says that marriage is honorable. And because it's honorable, you ought to lift it up on a pedestal. I said to you during the time of one particular president, how when, when a football player announced his gayness, he, he called him from the White House. This president called him from the White House and, and congratulated him on his courageous act of coming out. I said to you then, I say to you again today, that same president should have been calling married folk. Right, a man and a woman who's been married for 50, 60, and 70 years, congratulating them, sending them a plaque, sending them a proclamation because marriage is honorable. All right. All right, it says whatever you do, Paul, uh, the writer, the Hebrew writer, some say it's Paul, some say it's, it's Luke, but I want to announce to you today I wasn't there, so I just say the writer. The writer says that we must continually offer our sacrifices of praise in verse number 15. 
We got to continue to offer our sacrifice of praise. The fruit of our lips ought to have praise on it. Uh, that was, that's why it was so good this morning just, just to begin with the, a slow rendition of amazing grace to remind us that it was God's amazing grace that has brought us. It was so soothing, Sister Davis. It was so, uh, so intelligently put into our hearts, brother, brother, brother Powell. It was so well put together, Deacon Africa, to usher us into a spirit of prayer. Because it wasn't because you got up this morning, the reason why you're here. It wasn't because you inhaled and exhaled this morning. It's because of the almighty God. He breathed for you. And he exhaled for you. It's because of God. And for that reason alone, we ought to offer our sacrifices of praise. We ought to honor him every chance we get. We ought to thank him. Sometime walking down through the grocery store, you ought to remember when you didn't have money to buy groceries. And you ought to just stop right there. And they ought to call security on you sometime. Because you ought to stop right there, throw up your hands, and, and thank God, God, I'm able to fill this basket up. I told you my story. When I first came to Houston, I, I, I ate peanut butter. And I ate boiled eggs. I couldn't afford to, to keep my light on my first few months. So what I would do, I had to, I had to debate whether to pay the, the light fee for $150 or eat the peanut butter. Answer. I had to make a decision whether to pay the $150 light fee just to get the lights turned on, not to mention another $25 a month for the light bill. Right. Now that, that was 36 years ago. <laughs> and, and I had to make a decision. So what I did, I went out and bought me a flashlight for $2. Mm. And bought me some batteries for 50 cents. Right. Mm. And what I did when I showed up at the house, it was always at night. And I had no air conditioning because I had no electricity. <laughs> so what I would do, I would, I, would stay, I always stayed on the second floor. So folk wouldn't easily steal my stuff. Right. And so I would go up on the second floor, and because I was on the second floor, I could open the window at night. Yeah. All right. And you know in Houston, the window does you no good in the summertime. <laughs> oh, and so I would walk in and turn my flashlight on. I would shower with the flashlight. All right. I would say my prayers with the flashlight. Right. I would eat with the flashlight. Mm -hmm. I would do all that I could do with the flashlight because I knew that I could not afford it and I wasn't gonna bother mom and daddy about it. All right. The problem today is folks don't mind calling on mom and daddy. They don't mind staying with them until they're 50 years old. <laughs> And, and then, if they ask them to contribute toward the household, they will leave that house, go get their own apartment, and pay 10 times more just to show mom and dad. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. The Bible teaches, because God has blessed us, we ought to always praise him. I, I go down through the grocery store every now and then, and when I walk past the peanut butter, you talking about a sha na na sha na na. I get excited. I get happy when I can not only look at a little half a quart of peanut butter, but I can buy a full size peanut butter now. I can buy a whole dozen of eggs, the big ones now. Matter of fact, I can buy 18 eggs at one time now. And I'm thankful to God yes. that he's brought me a long way. Yes. And for that reason, I give him the sacrifice of praise. Yes. And I, yes. I glorify him. Yes. But don't you know that in your conversation, you praise him? Yes. In your lifestyle, you praise him? Yes. In your daily walking with God, you praise him? Yes. And that's what leads us to verse number 17 and verse number 18. Yes. He says, obey those who have rule over you. That's right. 
and be submissive for they watch over your soul. Protecting the unity. I know that people will always say, he's just a man like I'm a man. People will always say he put on his britches the same way I do. People will always come to the conclusion that he's just a mere man and, and I don't have to owe him anything. If you don't owe the man anything, make sure you understand the office. Because the fact of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, the office is what's important. If you respect the offering, the office, God can bless you. If you disrespect the office and you think you're disrespecting a man, the Bible says you're really disrespecting God. So the office is important. The office, the administration is important. He says obey. And in the 21st century, folk don't like that word obey. But this Greek word, obey, simply means to trust in agreement. Okay. This word obey means to, to have trust in agreement, to agree. You see, when Pastor, Pastor Eddie Jefferson said to me that 49 runs east to west, I couldn't correct him, so I had to trust in agreement. It didn't make me more or less of a man. It didn't make me more or less of a boy. But I knew granddaddy was listening. And see, I grew up as a boy in a time when granddaddies were, they paid the road. And daddies and mamas, they paved the road. And I knew that granddaddy had taught me to always respect, and mom and daddy had taught me to always respect my elders. That's right. Nowadays, I'm scared to get on a cane because rather than helping me cross the street, they may kick the cane out from under me. <laughs> so when Pastor Eddie Jefferson was as wrong as he could be, I could not correct him. I had to obey him. Mm -hmm. And the way I did it, I didn't have to tell the guys on the CP a lie. I only avoided saying anything about directions until I left the campus. Mm -hmm. Out of respect for the man of God. Mm -hmm. Now, young boys will tell men, grown men, will tell men that are, are in the pulpit, those who watch over their soul, where to go. But look at what the text says. It says, obey those who have rule over you. Obey means to agree, means to, means to trust in agreement. This word rule is those who have authority. Those who have governance over you. Those who have authority over you, those who have governance over you, he says, obey them. He says, obey them. Uh, they have authority over you. They have governance over you. They rule over you. And it says, be submissive. The word submissive means to yield. What I had to do with Pastor Eddie Jefferson was to yield to him. When you're in traffic, when you're in traffic, you may not want to yield. But you are a fool if you don't yield. You are a fool if you walk, you driving down the road, especially in Houston. Yeah, right. And now you're a fool anywhere if you get involved in road rage. I know that's right. When somebody sit at the red light so, too long, you best just better sit there yourself. It's better to be late than that. That's right. That's right. Sure try. The blowing of the horn may get you killed. That's right. That's true. Yeah, we have to get to a point where we yield. He says submit. This word submit means to yield. It means to surrender. This word yield means to be subject to. To be subject to. And let me tell you this. This word yield means to be weak. <laughs> the boys don't call you weak. 
Somebody on your trail right now, maybe your neighbors or your family members. Why you go down there and listen to a man stand in the pulpit and talk about breaking down the word? I can break it down for myself. I got a call this week. I got a call. I got a call this week. And a member of New Beginning Church says, Pastor David, is there something that you need to tell me? No, I don't think so. Well, I got a call from a certain person asking me, have my pastor called me? Have my pastor checked on me? Well, I said, you called him back and asked him, have Joel Osteen checked on him? <laughs> Matter of fact, you called me on my secular phone. You called me on my personal cellular phone. Ask him, what's your Osteen cell number? <laughs> There's always somebody who's not at anybody's church that will always try to upset the unity that's at your church. That's right. That's right. There's always somebody who will try to, uh, try to contaminate your spirit, but you have to be wise enough to understand who they are and where they're here. That's right. That's right. That's right. This guy had been a church, been to church since a funeral. Uh -oh. And that funeral was years and years ago. <laughs> and every time I see him, he want to run to me, hey, Pastor. I said, hey, brother. <laughs> the fact of the matter is, you can't let unspiritual people contaminate your spirit. That's right. That's right. And unspiritual people will always try to contaminate your spirit because they trying to break the unity. I'm saying to you today, protect the unity. Walk with God. Yes. Obey those who have rule over you. Yes. Submit, be submissive to them. Mm -hmm. And be submissive to the point where you understand they watch over your soul. That's right. They watch. They, they watch over your soul. This word watch comes from the word that we get the word sleeplessness. This word watch means that, that they sit up during the night. Mm -hmm. That's why they call the preacher a watchman on the wall. Mm -hmm. When you're asleep, he's watching over That's you. Right. When he's asleep, when, when you are asleep, he's thinking about you. Mm -hmm. when, when you're asleep, he's praying for you. That's right. And you can't afford to disrespect somebody who's watching over your soul. That's right. You can't you can't afford to you can't afford to, to, to mess over somebody. Mm. You can't afford to talk about somebody. Mm. And you know, I'm, I'm okay with talking about me because the fact of the matter is, I, I, I'm good with it. <laughs> I'm all, I'm all right with it. The fact of the matter is, you need to make sure that as you go from day to day, you don't let this world contaminate you. That's right. Saw a piece, and I was I was text this piece by one of our members, and I, I want to thank you publicly. I saw a piece, and then I saw it somewhere else, and, and it says, "If your pastor cannot correct you, they can't cover you. If your pastor cannot correct you, then he cannot cover you. Okay. No accountability is a liability." No accountability is a liability. If you cannot be held accountable, then you're a liability. You're a disadvantage. You're messing the rest of us up. No accountability is a liability. And if you're ready to leave every time you get rebuked, you're not looking for a covering. You're looking for a cover-up. Let me just, let me just say that again, so Sister so, so, so Henry can write this down, so so we can we can share our notes later on. This this is the scribe of the New Beginning Church. I, I want the scribe to make sure she writes this down. And if you're ready to leave every time you're rebuked, you're not looking for a covering. Period. You're looking for a cover-up. Let me, let me say that again. If your pastor cannot correct you, 
they or he cannot cover you. No accountability is a liability. And if you're ready to leave every time you get rebuked, you're not looking for a covering, you're looking for a cover-up. Ooh, I thought that was just so right on time. I mean, I got it late last night and I had already prepared this last week. <laughs> Obey those who have rule over you and be submissive for the for your soul as they who must give account. Mm -hmm. Not only do you have to be accountable, not only is there accountability for you, there's accountability for the preacher. Yes. He, got, he has to give account. He had to give an account. This word account means he got to give a report. That's right. This word account means that he has to have communication with God. God can call him on the carpet. And when he, this word account means that he has to give a reason and an utterance. So everything the man of God does, he got to give account, give account for it. He is responsible for how he handles you. Mm -hmm. He's responsible for how he carries himself. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you later on what you ought to do with, with preachers that need to be called in account. Mm -hmm. You see, so many churches have been destroyed because people have convinced deacons to tell the pastor what to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The word deacon comes from the Greek word diakones, this word diakone, it simply means a servant, yes, sir. a waiter. Therefore, if you are a deacon, you ought to serve, you ought to wait on the people. Amen. You are called, you are ordained to serve the church, serve the people, and support the pastor. That's right. That's right. Not keep them in line, that's God's place. Yes. Right. It's God's place because the Bible says that he has to give an account. Because the, the preacher, the pastor, is a feeder. This word means he's a feeder. He's a feeder. Why would you bite the hand that feeds you? This is a communion service, isn't it? In communion in Bible days, people would confess their sins right before communion. He says, he must give an account. Those who must give an account are those who are in leadership. Because let me just share with you. If I wasn't called to do this, I sure wouldn't. That's why when I arrived on the scene, I knew, I knew it would be what it would be. I had observed preachers. I had observed people. Sister Woods, if I didn't have to do this, I wouldn't do this. I could have people liking me if I wasn't the pastor. Well, <laughs> I would have people agreeing with me if I wasn't the pastor. I would have people uh, celebrating with me if I wasn't the pastor. I would have, have the freedom to walk in and out of people's house and say, hey, and have nothing to do with, with any disciplinary action or rebuking if I wasn't the pastor. Who would not want to have the freedom on Freedom Day? And even on Freedom Day, the pastor doesn't have that freedom. That's right. Let them do so with joy and not with grief. He says, he says, let them do so with joy. This word joy means that, that they need to have delight. They need to be doing it with gladness. They need to do it cheerfully. He says, he says, whatever you do, obey and submit to those who have leadership over you. And when you do that, do it where they can have joy. Right. Where they can walk away. I'm so glad that I can walk away from the New Beginning Church every Sunday and say, those are sure are some good people down there at that church. Mm -hmm. I am so glad that I don't have to wear my hair out messing with folk. <laughs> they allow me to do what I do with great joy. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, allow him to do it with joy. And do it with delight, do it with gladness, do it with cheerfulness. Right. And not with grief. The word grief means sigh. sigh. Means I'm doing it anyway. Anyway, I'm just doing it. Do, this word grief means murmuring. The word grief means groaning and grudgingly. 
You see, the Israelites gave Moses pure hell. Gave him so much hell, he missed the promised land. It is tough trying to lead a grumbling group of people. But I'm so appreciative, I'm so appreciative of the New Beginning Church. He says, do it, allow him to do this leadership thing with joy and not grief. For if you don't allow him to do it, look at what this text says, Hebrews 13, verse 17, the last part of that verse says, for that would be unprofitable for you. Unprofitable, gainless. Unprofitable, disadvantaged. Unprofitable, purposeless. This will be unprofitable for you. I have seen, I have actually seen people rise up against the pastor. And I've seen the same person who were in leadership that led the coup. You know, coups are prevalent in the 21st century. The person that led the coup, I began to watch a once healthy man who had broad shoulders and thick I watched him from that day on begin to slowly wither and wither and wither and wither away. The Bible teaches, touch not my anointing and do my prophets no harm. Don't even talk crazy about it. Don't even talk crazy to him. Don't do him any harm. I have seen people just, I've seen people just get a splinter in their hand or a staple in their hand and turn gang green and they die. And you can trace it right back. And I'm not talking about in Bible days. I'm talking about in the 21st century. He says it will be unprofitable you. It will not be beneficial for you. It will be a disadvantage for you. Then verse 18 says it like this. Pray for us. And I, I can close it out. He says, he says if, if the man of God is not headed in the right direction, pray for us. He says, he says, pray for us, for we are confident that we have a good conscience in all things desiring to live honorably. He says, pray for us. Number one, we're human, but we are confident that we have the right desire in our heart. We want to do the right thing. We want to act the right way. And let me just share with you. If you ever question or somebody else question who your pastor is or what he does, you need to get to see the man's heart. And for the last almost 17 years, you ought to see my heart by now. You should have seen my heart. You should know, even if I make a mistake, even if I say things the wrong way, even if I do something wrong, you ought to question, is that his heart? Or did somebody drive him? But Paul or Luke or the writer says, pray for us. Y'all do know that preachers need prayer, don't you? Yes. Yes. Matter of fact, we need prayer just to be praying for you. Can you imagine one man carrying everybody's secret round in his head? And having to go before God and, and tell God about it? You do know, regardless of how much you know, he usually knows more about the sheep than you know about the sheep. There are some things going on with the sheep right now, and it is my responsibility to know. But it's not my responsibility to tell. And therefore, as I know, you ought to pray. Jesus prayed. So how much more should we pray? And we, we worship God. We, we follow him. The text declares we ought to protect the unity. Yeah. Don't let anybody come in your church and tell your church. That's right. That's right. Don't let anybody come to the sheepfold and act a fool. That's right. Well, there are some things in my life, Matthew, Alexander, David's life. There are some things in my life that my hair grow when I see going wrong. <laughs> When, when I see something going wrong in these areas, my hair will grow. I get a righteous indignation. <laughs> Number one, Sister Davis and the girls, I'm the protector. Regardless of how many times I see them or don't see them, I'm the protector. Yes. I run to the rescue. When things go wrong with them, I get righteous indignation. 
Stuff began to come out of me. Uh, uh, Sister Jones, stuff come out of me you never thought you would see. Because I have responsibility. Another thing, when Turning Hearts Ministries and New Beginning Church got stuff going wrong, my hair begins to grow. Righteous indignation stands up. My fight alert turns on. When any of these two ministries start going wrong, my hair grows. I become totally ignorant of what's going on around me. I have to call on God. And ask God, help me now. Hold me, Jesus. I never will forget one, one time. Sister Davis didn't grow up listening to, to certain music. You know, she was sheltered. We had the summer enrichment camp here at the New Beginning Church. Sponsored by Turning Hearts Ministries. So both ministries are involved. Mm -hmm. A lady came in and she decided she's going to teach praise dancing. And I walked in through the door. And she had boys and girls singing a song and bouncing up and down on their knees talking about dropping it like it's hot. Oh, no. <laughs> Brother Evan, they said drop it like it's hot, drop it like it's hot. I said, not in here, not in here, not in here. <laughs> she won't be back, she won't be back, she won't be back no more. Because it is the person who has been given the authority to correct the wrong. Mm -hmm. Guess what? She hadn't been back, she hadn't been back, she hadn't been back anymore. It is our responsibility. And that's why even during this pandemic, you ought to pray for your pastor. We don't know what we're doing. We've never had a pandemic like this before. The swine flu was nothing compared to this. The West Nile virus, nothing compared to this. We just kind of making our steps as we believe God is leading us. And sometimes we miss God. Thank God for the choir being understanding as I've, sus I I've suspended the choir for a season because we got to get the coronavirus under control. That's right. I would not want to shut down this church again. I would not want to, to even have to pull back again. I'm just trying to operate in faith and wisdom. All right, man. So what's your responsibility? To pray for the preacher. Jesus always prayed because he knew that God had to answer. Yes. He prayed on his way to Calvary. Yes. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he knew he was going to die, but he still was praying. Yes. Regardless of how hard things get, you've got to be willing to pray. Yes, Lord. You have to be willing. This, this word pray, this word pray means to supplicate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The word supplicate means to cry out to God. To feel your prayers from your inner bow. It means to, to cry out to him, to supplicate. And then this word pray means to worship God on our behalf. Right. Have you ever thought about worshiping God on behalf of the leaders? Yes. Yes. Worshiping God on behalf of the man that's trying to make decisions. And sometimes we won't make the wrong decisions. Yes. Jesus went to Calvary praying. He was on the cross praying. He went into the grave after prayer. He rose early that third day morning and he began to pray again. Jesus to Christ, the righteous one. There may be somebody listening to me today who's never confessed Jesus as your personal savior. This is your moment. You can get to know him just as you are. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to get to know Jesus who died for your sins, who rose from the dead. The door is open. I give you two invitations. Number one, to get to know Jesus through salvation. Number two, get to know him in a better way through sanctification. The door is open. Will you come? If you're here today and you've never received Jesus as your personal Savior, you can do so now. 
just to leave the story that Jesus died for your sins and rose from the dead. If you can believe this story, you can join me in prayer and invite him into your life right now. Will you join me? Just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. If you're without a church home, I, I invite you to the New Beginning Church, 4251 Shiramai Road. We'll be glad to welcome you. If you are in the Houston area and want a church to visit, come and visit with us at 1030 every Sunday morning. We'll be glad to have you. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being a part of our service. Thank you for, for tuning in. We praise God for you and we welcome you. We thank you. It is now offering time. It is now offering time. It is now offering time. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offerings, and sacrificial gifts. For those of you in the room, if you didn't pick your envelope on the way in, raise your hand and you will be served. If you did not get an envelope on the way in, please raise your hand very high. Very high and you will be served. You can get a white and blue envelope or a red and white envelope. The blue and white envelope is for tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. And the red and white envelope is for pastor's love offering. Just ask for what you need and you will, you will be served. For those of you who are listening by live broadcast, uh, you can mail your offering in to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. And you can also use Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. I want to ask this side to stand and follow the young lady from the rear to the front. Bring forth the Lord's tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. Jesus met with his disciples 
and he said to them, This, do this, and remember of me, for as often as you do it, you show forth my death and my suffering until I come again. This passage is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Yes, Lord. To his name, his precious name.
together, gather your bread or your crackers, and also gather your drink so we can eat and partake together. Jesus says, for as often as we do this, we show forth his death and his suffering until he comes again. First Corinthians chapter 11, beginning at verse 24, says, And when he had given thanks, he broke it, meaning he broke the bread. And he said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Eat ye all of In that same manner, verse 25, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, he says, In that same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This is, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Drink ye all of it.
that you heal and bless. Sister Ann Paul, Reverend J.R. Richard, Sister Lula Richard, Sister Eloise Johnson, Brother Walter Johnson. We know you're the great physician. We know that you are the healer. We call upon you to heal as only you can. Give them total restoration. Bless their lives, Father God. That we, they will have a great testimony of how good you really are. We also pray for the Ward Williams and Smith family. Comfort them in times of bereavement. Keep them focused on who Jesus is. Strengthen them, Father God, that they will be able to walk through these times of bereavement. That you will receive the glory, Lord. That their lives will be turned toward you. That even in the death of this mother, men, women, boys, and girls will draw closer as a family. And they, Father God, will draw closer to you. Lord, we thank you for this time together. Bless us in our going. Keep us as we walk with you. Lord, we ask you to dismiss us from this place, but never from your presence. Unto you be power. Unto you be glory. Unto you be dominion. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. You are dismissed.